We have a new format for The Clash. Jimmy Johnson's doing more races, plus more driver announcements. On Tuesday, NASCAR announced the format for the 2024 Clash at the LA Coliseum. Riveting stuff, I know, but they put out a whole infographic because NASCAR does love a good infographic. And it's probably more complicated than it needs to be, but let's walk through it real quick. There's a couple changes that are, one's going to make fans very upset in a second, and the other one, I think, just makes total sense. So right off the bat, there will be qualifying slash practice as well as heat races on Saturday. Fans are not permitted to come in and watch those races on Saturday. It'll be like racing in 2020 again in front of a bunch of empty seats. And people are outraged on the internet about this because, well, they're outraged over anything and everything. We still are hung up on the fact that door numbers have been moved up. People won't let it go. On Saturday, we'll have the practice and qualifying session. No longer will there be single car qualifying runs. Instead, they'll just take the fastest car in practice. They're now on the pole for heat race number one. Second fastest in practice on the pole for heat race number two. And then they just fill out the rest of the grid from there. Perfectly fine with me. Don't have a problem with that at all. There will then be four 25-lap heat races, top five drivers from each heat advance onto the clash on Sunday night. If you finish six in heat number one, you're now on the pole for the LCQ and then so on and so forth. You can see it on the graphic and kind of, you know, see how it's all going to be laid out there. So fans won't be allowed in on Saturday. Some people are upset about it. I completely understand why they aren't allowed in. I'm also, you know, annoyed with it at the same time. So I get why fans aren't allowed in because opening up that stadium for fans then means that NASCAR has to then employ concessions, security, ushers, EMTs, everything that goes along with that. And people will say, well, just open up certain sections. That's fine, but you still have to employ all those people and they're not going to have that many fans come in and watch this. NASCAR in the past has sold these tickets on Saturday and they're likely not doing it because they didn't see enough of a demand for that, which is fine. Again, this has all come down to cost and I don't have a problem with them not opening it up if it doesn't make sense from a revenue standpoint. And then you have fans that are upset about it, and it's like, well, it's not really that big of a deal. And people that are the most upset about it are the people that aren't going. I have tickets to this event. I'll be there. Would I like to have gone to the heat race? Sure. Am I going to get upset about it? Absolutely not. Got other things to do. That moves us on to Sunday, where we'll have a 75-lap last chance qualifier. Top two in that, advance onto the clash later that night. Last chance qualifier should happen around 6.30 Eastern Time, also on Fox. And then they'll advance into the clash at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Fox. There will also be a provisional for the 23rd starting spot. It will be for the person that is not locked into the clash, but finished highest in the points. So Ryan Blaney's already locked in because he won the championship last year. That's a rule as well. So, you know, if you finish 17th in the points, say, and you're not locked in because you didn't qualify through a heat and you didn't win the LCQ, you're now in and so on and so forth. They will then move on to the clash at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. And there will be a 150 lap race, 75-75 with Machine Gun Kelly doing a music performance in the middle of that. Again, people are upset about Machine Gun Kelly. They're like, who listens to him? Blah, 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 blah. Eminem made him irrelevant, made him switch complete genres. I'm not disputing any of that, but he is at least a relevant music act in 2024, which is a massive thing. No longer is it Ario Speedwagon or Poison or KC and the Sunshine Band or Tim Duggar. It's at least somebody that has, you know, over 2 million monthly streams on Spotify. That's a good move. NASCAR has also limited the field from... 27 cars in 2023 to 23 cars in 2024, which I think is a great move for a quarter mile short track. So if you're going to the clash, let me know. I'd like to meet up with some people or at least say hi, because it'll probably be the last time that they're at the LA Coliseum, which is why I'm going. And it just seems like a fun time. Plus I piggyback it on a work trip there. Because of Martin Luther King Day on Monday, everybody held off on doing their announcements out of respect for, you know, Martin Luther King, and then instead announced everything on Tuesday. So there's a fair map. We'll start off with the Richard Petty of NASCAR, Jimmy Johnson, announcing that he's added three more races to his 2024 NASCAR Cup Series schedule with sponsorship from Carvana. He's taking the Dale Earnhardt Jr. sponsorship route, where basically the owner slash driver is still very marketable. So in return for them running a couple of races, they get that sponsor to come on and sponsor their other cars. I don't know if Carvana is actually sponsoring either the 42 or the 43 at Legacy Motor Club, but Jimmy is running three races for Advent Health, three races for Dollar Tree, and now three races for Carvana. In addition to what he's already announced, Jimmy announced today that he'll be entering the Daytona 500, the Brickyard 400, as well as the season finale 
at Phoenix. He'll also be racing at Texas in the spring, Dover, the Coke 600, as well as both Kansas races and the fall Las Vegas race. There's a lot of races that Jimmy is actually racing here, and they're all over the place. I would love to, for him to have added the Southern 500 to just really do all of NASCAR's crown jewels since the Brickyard's back. Speaking of the Brickyard, it is cool that Jimmy gets to go run the Brickyard now because he got he had to miss it in his farewell season in 2020 because he contracted COVID, so he gets his shot at redemption on the 30th anniversary. He could join the five-time winner's club like Jeff Gordon, which would be kind of cool, doubtful, but cool. I am happy to see that aspiring road course ace Jimmy Johnson has decided to hang it up. Much like Michael Jordan with baseball, just stick to what you're good at. Stick to basketball, Jimmy Johnson, stick to ovals. He's great at turning left, and I'm glad that he's finally gotten back to that. We had a few other driver announcements as well. Craftsman Truck Series driver Daniel Dye announced that he will be joining Colleg Racing on the Xfinity side for a 10-race deal with sponsorship from Champion Container. Massive opportunity for him. Love that opportunity for him. It starts at Daytona, and then he'll have nine other races throughout the year, meaning Colleg will have, at least in 10 races, four cars in the Xfinity Series, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. They are competitive cars. They're top 10 worthy cars. And then we'll see what Daniel Dye can do in those. He, of course, raced last season for GMS in the Truck Series, where Champion Container came on board. He then, and his management team, nurtured that sponsorship, turned it into more sponsorship this year when he joined McAnally. And then they also have parlayed that into an Xfinity Series ride, which again, kind of like what I talked about in that Stuart Haas Racing sponsorship video, it's so important for some of these younger drivers to nurture these sponsorship relations because one, it helps open up other opportunities for them, but two, it also kind of gives them the freedom to try to find those opportunities, which is great. So Daniel Dye in the Xfinity Series with Colleg in 2024 for 10 races, and we'll see how he does. He previously had a few handful of starts last year for Alpha Prime, uh, but Colleg and Alpha Prime are, I think everybody knows this, on different scales in terms of competitiveness. So this is definitely some of the best equipment Daniel Dye's been in. We'll see what he can do. Then we have this Dale Earnhardt lookalike in Jeffrey Earnhardt, which I absolutely love the fact that he does have some old senior look to him, announced that he is joining, rejoining rather, Sam Hunt Racing on a part-time basis in 2024. He previously raced for the team in 2022. They had a best finish that season of seventh at Nashville. Hopefully they can build on that because I think that Sam Hunt Racing is going to win in 2024. Whether that's with Jeffrey or somebody else, I'm not sure, but they're putting competitive cars on the track, and you do that enough, eventually you'll find Victory Lane, and I think that they do that this season, which is going to be awesome when it finally does happen for them. I tried to work in lyrics like making you know fun of that Body Like a Back Road song that you know Sam Hunt has, and it just felt really creepy, so I decided not to do that. Now you guys can see into my brain there, there for a second. But for Jeffrey, I'm excited. He goes out there, he hustles, he grinds to find sponsorship. And to get an opportunity like this, I think is a great one once again. In addition to Jeffrey's announcement and Daniel's announcement and Jimmy's announcement, we also had an announcement from Rev Racing. They will be once again fielding a truck for Nick Sanchez in the truck series in 2024 with sponsorship from Gamebridge. Matt Crafton's arch nemesis comes back for a second season in the truck series where I fully expect him to win in 2024. He came close in 2023. Probably should have won Texas if it wasn't for Carson Hosovar once again. But for Nick Sanchez, I think he's a guy that can contend for a championship this year. And I still expect another announcement out of Rev at some point. We'll wait and see on that. And then on the team front, I think something that has really flown underneath the radar is the fact that Front Row Motorsports announced that they've switched their alliance from Rosh Fenway Kozlowski last season to being Team Penske this year within the Ford family. Front Row Motorsport had their best year ever as a company with their alliance with RFK, who had their best season in the better part of a decade. And then they decided to just go ahead and change everything up and go to Team Penske because they've won the last two you know, NASCAR Cup Series championships, which I don't fault that logic at all, but I'm just really interested to see how that plays out. Maybe they felt pushed out because of the Roush alliance that they have now with Rick Ware Racing, I'm not 100% sure, but it just felt like things were really clicking over there with RFK and Front Row, and now they're moving over to Team Penske, which, you know, Team Penske does have a history of potentially trying to fix races with people that are within their manufacturer. I'm just throwing it out there. Front Row's, you know, maybe a little bit slightly complicit in a Richmond situation a few years ago, but I'm interested to see how that plays out for them, because I would argue that it worked out well for the Wood Brothers, 
Uh, but they've, you know, of course fallen off, but, you know, being in an alliance with them did give them Ryan Blaney and then ultimately put them, you know, into victory lane at Pocono as well. So maybe it works out for front row, but a lot of driver announcements, a lot of announcements just in general, which is always a good thing. Makes the uh, off season speed up a little bit more, but we're basically three weeks away, two and a half weeks away from having cars on track in Los Angeles, which is great. We're not that far out from the Daytona 500, under a month now, or just basically out a month now, out from the Daytona 500, which is which is awesome. So let me know in the comments, do you like the format changes? Do you like these driver announcements? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.